Hey everyone and welcome to Wet Code. We're in this video, we're going to learn how to monitor user activity and errors with Nginx by using error and access logs. So first, let's start out with error logs. So when Nginx faces any issues, whether it be a configuration file error or Nginx is abruptly stopped, details of the error will be written to an error log. These details consist of the error's severity level and information. So as an example here, we can see an error log listed right here. Specifically, we can see the time, we can see the severity of the error, we can see information as what the error was. And for me, this error is when I tried to access Nginx like this, or an HTML file served up, we have that fav, I fav icon request that automatically gets sent. And because it doesn't exist, we can see right here, get to whatever opening end user share Nginx HTML five icon failed. No such file. So this is an error log with severity and things like that. But so this error log right here, the syntax and everything, is configured with the error log directive. So inside this nginx.conf file right here, we can see we have an error log directive like this. Specifically, the syntax of this error log directive is the error log file path. So it's writing all the logs to error.log. And then we have the error syntax level. Note that for me, these logs are being logged to the console as opposed to this error.log file because I have a symlink to our standard output. So this is essentially, this log are the contents being printed to this console. But anyway, the first argument here is the path to this error file. The second is the error level, which this is the severity level of the logging. And it can be one of the following. And let me post um, or paste these right here. So it can be debug, info, notice, warn, and all of these here. And note that these are in order of severity. So debug is the least severe and emergency is the most severe. So when we set the level of logging, which is this argument right here, to our error log directive, all log levels above the specified level will be logged. So for example, here I have notice, and this fav icon request was an error because we couldn't open that five icon location. So this was an error, and it's it was logged because error is above this notice. So if anything happened that was warn, error, crit, alert, or emergency, or notice, these would all be logged to our error log file. And then something else about this error log directive is that it can be placed in the main HTTP stream, server, and location levels. So it doesn't have to just be up here in the global context. We can place it inside HTTP, inside server, and so on. So let me actually give an example. I'm just gonna paste in a server block right here. So inside this server block, we have our error log still at the very top. Let me remove this. So we have our error log at the very top, but we also have one that's more specific inside our server context. And so if this error log right here is specified at multiple levels, the most specific context will contain the error log. So if this error occurs within the server block, then it'll be logged to this location as opposed to the one all the way up here. And then also one other thing is if we have multiple error logs at the same level, then each error is written to each log. So if we had multiple error logs, like if I moved this one here and the error occurred within the server block, it would be logged to both of these files. But so that's it with error logs. Now let's start talking about access logs. So whenever Nginx processes a request, it will log information about the request to an access log. So for example, we can log the IP address of the client, their user agent, status code of the response, and things like that. So an example of an access log is, let me do one actually with a curl request. So let's say I do curl, I have Nginx running on port 6464. We can see our access log right here. And what this corresponds to is this access log directive along with the log format we have right here. So access logs are configured using this access log directive with also a log format specified by this log format directive. And the syntax for this access log directive is the path of the access log file. Once again, I have a symlink of this to standard output, which is why we see it in the console. And then we also have the format. So here we can see we specified the format. We give it a name of main, and then this is everything in it. And then we apply that log format to our access log. So we can see that here. So we have the remote address and then a comma or a hyphen or whatever that is, which is this right here and the hyphen right there. Then our remote user, that's blank. So it's just a hyphen. Then we have our time between brackets, which is this. We have our request, which is this get HTTP. We have our status, which is 200, the body bytes, and so on. So if we access, there'll be more information if we access through a browser. So say I make this request through here, we can see another access log, which is the address again, 
and we can also see the user agent right here because we're using not the curl command, which is just curl. Instead, we have all this information about the browser. And also, just like the error log directive, if the access log directive is specified at multiple levels, the most specific context will contain the access log. So let me change our server over here. Say instead now we had an access log here and another one here. If someone accesses our server, this will be logged over the one up here. Whereas if someone accesses our API route, that'll be access or logged to this location as opposed to this one. And then also once again, if several access log directives are at the same level, then the access log is written to each log. So if this log was here and received an access or a request to our server, it would be logged to this location and also this location. And we can of course have multiple formats. So say we wanted to define another log format here. So say we create this and we just want to call this my format. But for this, all we wanted to do is just log out this information. Then we could do that. And then we just change wherever we want that format. So we'd change it like this. So that's how you can use your own specific format. But this is it on Nginx error and access logs. If you have any questions, leave them for me in the comments. I'll try to get back to you. Besides that, thank you for liking and subscribing. And also, if you really like this video, please consider downloading my Chrome extension from the web store. It's called Wit Scepter. Link is in the description. Just give me a good review. But besides that, uh, have a good one.